Good morning, everyone. So, I am going to speak to the County of Los Angeles top 10 priorities in IT security. But let me just underscore priorities. Those are my goals. They could be my commitments, also as obligations to the citizens of the County of Los Angeles. Uh, any way you look at it, these are uh, major goals, commitments to the uh, citizens that we serve. The agenda for today, without, I cannot proceed without giving you a thumbnail of who the County of Los Angeles is. I'm going to speak a little bit about the security triangle, get to the top 10 priorities, and then a discussion on the standards methodologies employed for the county, and then a summary. Now, I don't know how many are familiar with the county of Los Angeles, but it is the largest county in this nation. You could call us the state of Los Angeles, if you will, because we're larger than 46 states in this nation. If we were a nation, based on our budget, we'll have the 19th largest economy in the world. Again, this is a county. Uh, we employed roughly around 101, 102,000 employees, 85 to 90 percent of them are represented by a union, a labor union. Firefighters, physicians, nurses, electricians, carpenters, lifeguards, etc. Uh, very widespread. Uh, 34 major departments, I always speak to these departments in terms of, from a corporate perspective, there's 34 line of businesses. I have the district attorney, I have assessor, uh, public library has 84 sites, I have five hospitals as well, ranging from 120 beds to 700 beds. There's a mental health department, there's a public health department, there's an animal care control, there's a parks and rec, I could go on and on. But to simplify it, organization structure of those 34 departments are consolidated into five clusters. There's a health cluster, a social services cluster for the child support services, public social, social services department. There's a third cluster for operations, fourth cluster for, uh, let's say, uh, legal or public safety, and, and then there's a fifth cluster. So uh, essentially that's the thumbnail sketch of the county of Los Angeles again. Our budget for fiscal year 11-12 was 23.3 B, as in billion. Now, our information security program was adopted by the Board of Supervisors in 2004. So it, it's, to some degree, it's very mature. And for those basketball fans out there, um, Phil Jackson, the former coach, great coach with the Chicago Bulls and Los Angeles Lakers. He has the triangle offense. What we established was the triangle defense. And, and, this, and what this defense is comprised of is the bottom right there where it says set, security engineering teams. These are teams that are comprised of volunteer technicians from all of the 34 departments. And we have about five or six teams. For example, we have a whole street and isolation team. We have a network street and isolation team. We have a policy and good operating procedures team, risk assessment, anti-malware, and application security. This is the team or teams that develop our policies and standards, as well as procedures that is to be used countywide. Countywide, our whole program is based on securing the data as well as establishing minimum security baselines as a standard. And you'll probably hear this word standard um, throughout my presentation today, uh, so don't get bored with standard. The bottom left, CSERT. Obviously, we could do a lot with technology, we could do a lot with processes, but there's going to be bad things to happen sometimes outside of our control. 
So the countywide computer emergency response team is comprised of all departments. Departments have a, what we call DCERT, departmental CERT team. And then um, within the CCERT, incident response, our relationships with law enforcement. Uh, if two or more departments are attacked, we pretty much activate CCERT countywide. It's kind of like the neighborhood watch program. If two departments be in probe or we see some sort of reconnaissance, we probably should let the other departments know what's going on as well. That middle circle, those are DISOs, D or DISOs, D-I-S-O, Departmental Information Security Officers. They are, by based on board policy, a department must have uh, one appointed through some classification or a functional position. And the DISO meets with uh, my office or this, uh, my position, yours truly, uh, monthly at this committee called ISSC, Information Security Steering Committee. This is where everything comes together, things we should be doing, things that we're not addressing, uh, that's the, it's about a two and a half hour meeting and it's very intense, but it's very collaborative as well. Again, triangle defense, not offense. That's the other guy, that's Phil Jackson. Priorities. Now many of these priorities are ongoing. Um, none of them has not been started. These are continuing from last year's or from pre previous years. For example, we just last week we just had our annual security uh, recognition awards program. If you refer back to that set team, each one of those set team leaders receive a plaque each year in February. We, it, we used to provide these awards in January. We figure it's best to do it in February because of the Oscars and the Emmys and things of that type. Uh, since we're down in Southern California, it kind of makes sense. But besides these team leaders receiving their plaque uh, of appreciation and recognition, we have three key awards. We have a special recognition award. We have the Best Security Idea of the Year award. But the grand finale is an award for the Best Departmental Security Program. This is one element of the program that brings competition in terms of security and health posture within each department because if one department wins it, the other three, 33 departments kind of want to be in a running the following year. So it really brought competition uh, in, in terms of a positive paradigm shift for those departments that may have a lack of security. Server virtualization. Uh, there's this has been going on for a couple of years, uh, and, and this is where we establish minimum security standard baselines throughout the county. If we don't have a minimum baseline, how do we know what's good and what's bad? So our virtual data centers, our uh, virtual machines, uh, as a committee, again, through the set team all the way up to ISSC, uh, we have those standards uh, developed. Uh, for the server virtualization. Now this word socialization, everybody's familiar with BYOD. Well, BYOD as I see it is the consumer or consumerization into the business aspect of our organizations. Well, I say since we're a business and I have 34 departments to collaborate with, have fun with, have discussions and conversations with, when we implement an initiative, project, it could be activity. We socialize that security initiative, meaning that old school, we, we used to focus on IT for implementation, proof of concept, et cetera. What we've done is bring in the BUs, the business units. So for example, if I'm deploying secure email, for which we have, based on FIPS 140-2 standard, uh, let's say mental health. We will include their help desk, their IT, obviously, and their security and privacy folks, but we also include their psychologists, their clinical psychologists. 
to get that feedback before we actually go live. And we've done that across the 34 departments. Mind you, my 34 departments from a corporate perspective, to me, look like 34 corporations. 34 corporations, 34 lines of business. So that's socialization. Everybody's dealing with BYOD. I don't particularly like the term, uh, bring your own device. Uh, really, it's kind of like bring your own data. And so we are centralizing on a mobile device management uh, solution that also includes MAM, mobile application management. But also, uh, the Trusted Computing Group is doing a lot of good things that I have my radar are, uh, in terms of MTM, the Mobile Trust Module. That is something that you should uh, encourage you to start tracking in terms of MTM. Uh, that would do wonders in terms of that end user experience, in terms of authentication, and, and just the safeguarding of data. Also, I BYOD program is based on data. So we have three levels. For example, confidential and sensitive data on a portable device. I don't, I don't care if it's an iPad, I don't care if it's a, uh, a smartphone. The key is that we standardize on iOS and BlackBerry for confidential data as well as legislative data. That's it. And the, the standard also includes remote wipe, uh, use of passcode, et cetera. But it was done collaboratively with the SET, security engineering team, specifically HSI, the whole street in isolation. Incident response. We get probe all the time. We've had our share of attacks. We average about 21 incidents a year. Uh, and those incidents are defined and reported up to my office based on lost laptop, uh, zip drive, uh, a web defacement, any, anything that you can uh, visualize or deem as potential loss of data. That's reported and that's part of the 21 incidents per year. We uh, also, uh, because of that, we've in the last year and a half, done a lot more outreach and established relationship with law enforcement. So the local office of the FBI or Federal Bureau of Investigation, strong relationship there. Also the United States Secret Service, also Department of Homeland Security, all within the local office of Los Angeles. A, a, a big component of that is uh, MSISAC the Multi-State Information Sharing Analysis Center, they give us the, they have their thumb on the pulse of attacks outside of our external network. And also, having a relationship with law enforcement, I get intel prior to us being attacked. We actually see their reconnaissance before we get attacked. That's huge, that's, that's really huge. For example, a lot of you probably heard of the uh, incident recently in Los Angeles with uh, related to the former ex LAPD officer Christopher Donor. Uh, LAPD is city of Los Angeles. We have the sheriff's department. I did not mention, but sheriff's under the public safety cluster. Well, we had some uh, interesting activity related to that. That we had some foresight in uh, prior to the initial attack. A lot of people look at government, regardless if you city or county. The city of LA is just one of the 88 cities within the county of LA. So uh, I cannot stress it enough to have relationships with your uh, federal government agencies. Especially a lot of the layer seven attacks that we see is coming outside of the United States. Coming from outside of the United States and they're constant. My last five, 12 departments of the 34 are sanctioned by HIPAA and high tech. So based on the recent January 25th HIPAA security and privacy rule uh, amendment where uh, it's huge for 12 departments. And, and the departments ranges from 500 employees 
to 20,000 employees. The Department of Health Services that I had mentioned earlier that had the five uh, hospitals, 21,000 or so employees. So uh, I'm dealing with HIPAA constantly. Notwithstanding that I also deal with PCI, the payment card industry standard for credit cards or e-commerce, uh, the social services department, which is the uh, welfare institution codes for the state of California, et cetera. Uh, also the FTC or the Federal Trade Commission red flags rule. A lot of, lot of compliance going on, but HIPAA is huge because of the substantial penalties related to the electronic private health record as well as our efforts with HIE, or the Health Information Exchange that we're establishing uh, down in the Los Angeles area uh, that we provide that uh, medical record, not just from our hospitals, but Cedars-Sinai and other hospitals within our uh, local region. Encryption standard. Way back in 2007, we uh, had a effort, an initiative, to uh, utilize full disk encryption for all of our laptops. We have 12,000 laptops. It took us about six months to encrypt. Again, full disk encryption. Great solution. Uh, we embraced TPM, the Trusted Platform Module, back then. And, and also now, uh, we are not reevaluating, but there's a element of encryption that uh, the self-encrypting drives are very elegant from end user perspective. Again, I mean, I'm really big on the end user experience, trying to maintain that, that balance of the maintaining of the encryption and the keys, as well as the protection of the data. But how does the end user feel about it? Again, it's part, it's part of that socialization aspect of our program. The encryption standard is going to be based on, uh, it, it's, I'm grappling between the AES 256 and above versus, uh, let's say, a, a vendor solution because we got different type of devices. So, um, but this is, again, being discussed within the security engineering team collaboratively. Risk management program. About four years ago, uh, phase one of the program was to establish and standardize, and for which we have a network vulnerability uh, solution where that each department can identify vulnerabilities by running these scans, discovery scans, vulnerability scans, uh, based on a standard scan schedule, monthly schedule. All departments do that. Uh, they see the reports. The raw data comes up to my office, and we have, again, a thumb on the on the pulse to understand where the vulnerabilities are for workstations and servers. Phase two of the risk management program is specifically directed to layer seven, the application and data, database vulnerability scanning. I'm trying to get the program to be proactive and less reactive. And then phase three of the risk management program probably 12, 18 months out is to take a serious look at uh, network layer, uh, DLP, or data leakage protection. Web application firewall. It's a safe haven. If you don't have one, you, you really need to get one. It, it has saved us numerous times. Um, there's a department I did not mention, the register recorder. They process election results they process absentee ballots. They also provide uh, voter locations. Now, if I was to say, why would anybody attack the absentee ballot location? Let me share with you that there's a huge population over in Pakistan, Afghanistan, part of our military. In order for them to vote, and they're raising a county of LA, they have to access that site. So my only point is having a web application firewall to protect your DMZ uh, have, have, has brought dividends to that uh, solution. Uh, so we're moving forward with that implementation um, for all of our applications in our DMZ. Last but not least, as I stated, our policy or our program rather 
was adopted formally by the Board of Supervisors in 2004. So therefore, our policies are nine years old. I had to revise our policies for BYOD and for social media and for consistent use of language. Many of our policies had indicated that uh, one policy information resources and information assets, they differ. So we had to make the change. These are seven standards that we use to varying degrees. FIPS 140-2, uh, I spoke to, obviously competitive solicitations, RFPs, RFIs, is something that you should include uh, uh, as far as standards. Standards do correlate to policy. I just mentioned our policy. So all of our standards correlate to our policies. Economies of scale from an uh, economic perspective, you heard me speak to the end user uh, experience. Obviously, interoperability, the compatibility of solutions is huge. Standards help uh, solidify uh, that concern, and you got to be concerned about your help desk support. As you heard, County LA has developed numerous in house standards, but let me suggest to you that those standards are based on industry standards, uh, specifically the ones listed. High trust. CSF, that is the one uh, security framework that is used by pretty much all of the healthcare organizations in this nation. Now, mind you, I have three departments that are, uh, we move in that direction. The IETF, pay attention to the RFCs. ISO is obviously 27,000 series for a security program. NIST is huge. A lot of my standards is derived from NIST. We pick out paragraphs, sections, and we pick it out, we cite it, we reference it. Uh, I can't say enough about NIST as well. I can't say enough about the trusted uh, computing group. You heard me speak to the TPM and the SIDS, uh, and obviously authentication is huge as we move forward with BYOD. In summary, now I'm not sure how many agree with this statement, policies influence behavior, let me just say this. When you drive on a freeway, that, that speed limit sign is regulating your behavior. When you go to work and there are certain times both to arrive at work, there's some uh, policies, administrative policies for tardiness and other type of administrative policy for telework. Those are all regulating behavior. So therefore, policies influence behavior, and I have 101,000 employees where that those policies are being revised so that we can reduce our risk. And those standards, those standards influence technology for your appropriate business and technical model, as you heard uh, from my top 10 I spoke to earlier. And then the technology standards also has much value because it affords a consistent operation support and risk architecture, as you heard earlier. And then paying attention to standards potentially, potentially reduces uh, technology complexity and costs. And then lastly, standard operating procedures. Ladies and gentlemen, SOPs being used in aeronautics, military, healthcare, why not we use it in IT? And therefore, it's been around for years, it's a reason to use standards. I thank you for your time.